Friday night in the Spa City, and it should be no surprise who's playing for the 1A championship tonight. It's Norfolk and Mammoth Spring just down the road from the Arlington Hotel here. Thanks for joining us courtside. Kyle Deckelbaum and Bobby Swafford with you. Just feels like, Bobby, these two teams have been on collision course. It really has, and this is not the GVR playing. This is the same matchup that we had in the state championship game last year. The two best teams in Class 1A all season long. No surprise they're here in Hot Springs. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's already been a fun day here, the second day of the championships here in Hot Springs. Earlier today, one of the marquee matchups. It was Conway and North Little Rock. It's Jemiah Brown, April Edwards here. Great matchup, Conway in control. Chloe Clark at the MVP, the future Stanford Cardinal. And the Wampus Cats bringing home that championship. And then Jonesboro, boy, they were impressive. It's Tevin Tate and Dion Buford, the MVP there for the Hurricane. Jonesboro winning the championship. We'll find out who wins the 1A Girls Championship. We'll break it all down when we come back to Hot Springs. You're watching the Centennial Lake State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. You know, I think sports are really big to a lot of people. And because it's an important part of our fabric in our community, and the one good thing about what I've seen is it's high quality production. You know, you think of the small communities all over Arkansas, it's a big deal that they can turn on the TV or DVR or whatever and know they're going to get a quality product. And so I think it just expands the, uh, the focus of what PBS is doing. You know, Arkansas PBS is doing a great job and, and I think it's part of education. What makes a dairy bar different from other food establishments? Here in Arkansas, it describes a whole selection of restaurants we love. It's a location that serves ice cream, burgers, or hot dogs, some having been in existence 50 years or more. Come travel with me on a culinary itinerary of Arkansas Dairy Bars. Download the PBS Video app or watch online. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. I am your midwife, and my overwhelming concern is for your well-being and for that of the baby. If I lose my inheritance, I lose my independence. You will find the love you deserve. Someone sent me a letter. Beware, lovely Jane, for a terrible retribution is at hand. He wants us to know how powerful he is. Only on Arkansas PBS. Norfolk and Mammoth Spring here at Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs. We're set for what should be a great championship rematch. These two teams have been 1-2 all year. Norfolk feels like they've been judged against Mammoth Spring all year. So you get the final bragging rights tonight. Let's take a look at how these teams got here. We'll start with the visitors, with Norfolk. And these two teams, boy, they have blown through their brackets. Wins over Sacred Heart and Dermot and Rural Special for Norfolk. Bobby, they've got three players that can really score. We're going to spotlight one of them in Keely Blanchard. Yeah, when Keely Blanchard is going, she gets to the foul line. Foul line extended that mid-range game, averaging 15 points per contest. She's the st straw that stirs the drink, and if she gets heated up from the outside, that's when they're at their most dangerous. Talk about Mammoth Spring here. They, too, have run through their side of the bracket, beating Guy Perkins and Taylor and Wonderview. Never won a title, making their second appearance here in the championship game and it all starts for them offensively with Bryn Washam. Yeah, you saw the margin of victory difference on the top half of the bracket. Mammoth Spring 37 and 4 and, and Washam is the biggest reason why. Averaging 20 points per contest, but maybe what most importantly, Kyle, is 40% success rate from the three-point line for her. If she gets warmed up from the outside, it could be a long night for the Lady Panthers defense. Yeah, she averages 23 rebounds, two assists. She had 15 in last year's finals and I think that's what makes this such a great game, as you see Gilly Blanchard there. 
a lot of experience on both these teams. Both teams have players that were in this uh, realm a year ago, and they know exactly what to expect. Yeah, Norfolk expects to be here. This is their third consecutive season in the title game. They lost a Rural Special in 21. They beat Mammoth Spring last year, and you know the Lady Bears, 37-4. and four. That, That's an impressive slate right there. They are flashing back to what happened on this court last year. They want to go out and prove, hey, we're the team to beat this year, and there's a good look at their leading score, Washington. Yeah, Washington has been fantastic for Mammoth Spring, a team that wants to try to push the ball and play pretty quickly. These two teams played just a few weeks ago in regionals, February 25th, a 44-40 win for Mammoth Spring. So certainly if revenge is a factor tonight, they got it in part by beating Norfolk in their first meeting since last year's championship game, but this is the one that yeah. counts. Yeah, winning the regional, nice. Winning the state championship, that's real nice. This is the one they want to win. You see the starters here for the Norfolk Panthers. It'll be Blanchard, Shaddy, and Allman. Three 1,000-point scorers in that program. Moody and Rasmussen found round out their starting five. And take a look here at Mammoth Spring as well. In addition to Washam, it's going to be Laney Young, Tay Davis, Adriana Corbett, and Sarah Crow, who's been big for these Lady Bears for a couple seasons now. Finding a way to match up with Crow, 35 and wide, it's going to be big for Norfolk. How do they combat the size that she has in the middle? You know, the numbers aren't huge for Crow this year, eight points, four rebounds. If she stands six foot two, if she can control the lane and keep Norfolk's offense from penetrating and getting to the rim, that can really take them out of their flow offensively. These two teams have dominated at this level all season. Mammoth Spring, for example, they've won 30 of their 37 games by more than 15 points. But this is the one that matters for these two teams here. And away we go on a Friday night and a, out of bounds here. And this will be Mammoth Spring's ball to get things started. Got to ease into it, Kyle. We've seen these championship games so many times. The nerves can't win it in the first quarter, but you certainly can't take yourself out of it. Got to settle in, get into your offense, and get a flow going. Especially when both teams know hey, this is probably going to be a close game. I yeah. miss on everything there. Liza Shaddy the rebound. This arena does funny things to the jump shot, but both of these teams haven't played here last year. You wouldn't think that would be as much of an effect as a team who wouldn't have any championship experience. And this is Healy Blanchard and gives it off. Blanchard, a fun player to watch, probably the best three-point shooter, best athlete on this team as well. Here's Shaddy, gives it off. A three-point attempt by Almonds off the mark. Out of bounds, last touch by Mana Spring. Second chance opportunities can be big. I mentioned the size advantage for Mammoth Spring, but you look at the tall guards, 5'10", 5'9", 5'8", for Norfolk. They'll have to get in there and mix it up inside. Blanchard, 40 points in this state tournament. That's a good shot underneath there by Casey Moody. Nice job by Moody, the sophomore, knocks down the mid-range jumper. Three-point attempt on the other end, not there. A fight for the rebound. Batted around. Mammoth Spring holds possession. A physical play early here. And a travel is going to be called. A really tight defense there by Norfolk. You tell the ball goes to the corner for Mammoth. They're looking to trap. That time the Lady Bears couldn't handle the pressure, and they turn it over. Mammoth Spring, Juniors. 30-0 as ninth graders, a group that's played together for a long time, as you see often at this level. Shaddy on the drive. Back out, Almonds can try another three. Knocks this one down. Big shot there, top of the key, early 5-0 lead for the Lady Panthers. And their contingent from North Central Arkansas has made the trip. Kylie Allman, the MVP in this game last year. She had 22 in this game a year ago. Crow kicks it out. Young will give it off. To give to Washam, the kick out to the corner. Reisner all the way across. Young gives it off. Inside, not there. And Corbett with the miss there, running the other way. He's... Now, whistle's going to be called there. That was Allman in the paint. 
We're almost two and a half minutes into this contest. And you can still see the nerves. They're still kind of there. Both teams missed a point blank shot there. Got to convert on the bunnies. It's a really nice job by Mammoth and moving the basketball. He got a illegal screen. And Mammoth Spring will take that down 5 0 here very early. Thought the Lady Bears might have overpassed the touch on their last possession, but they got right to the rim. And Adriana Corbett got a wide open shot. Yeah, excellent job to throw yeah. your hands in the air. Yeah. Make, sure, make sure everybody sees that one. Watch him use it off. This is Davis inside. Corbett looking for some help. Kicks it back out. Davis. Laney Young. Inside, good ball movement there. Underneath, shot won't go. And the putback is there. Adriana Corbett. It's a nice job of sticking with it. Corbett missed the first two shots in the lane, but got her own miss, put it back up, and got the Lady Bears on the board. She's capable of scoring. 26-point game earlier this year. Coach Scott Small called her the hardest working kid on the team. Nice job on the baseline, Kylie Allman. Again, well, I think we're starting to see Norfolk likes the mid-range. Yeah. You know, the, you know, ball fake from the three-point line. If you close out too hard, dribble inside, knock down the 15-footer. When's the last time you've seen a team with 3,000-point scores? It doesn't happen often. It's starting them young and getting a lot of production. Two of them, by the way, are juniors. It helps when you're in the state championship game three years in a row as well. That's true. Playing those extra contests. <laughs> well, 35 games this year and 36 last year. Allman will inbound here. On the line. Oh, it sure was. I think you're, you're right. Both teams kind of settling in. Both teams with a couple turnovers to begin here. Davis looking for some help from the outside. Gets it up top. Washam on the drive. Around a couple defenders, and that's blocked out of bounds. And yeah, Blanchard comes over with the help side defense. We're really seeing a nice job by the Lady Panthers closing out and not allowing anything easy in the lane. Mammoth really struggling to get good looks. Bryn Washam, 15 points in the finals a year ago. Six 30-point games this year. That's Crow with a pretty move in the paint. Really nice footwork there by the 6'2 Crow. Nice spin move. Pins the defender. Easy lay-in. On paper, Crow certainly an advantage in this game. Few players above 5'10. Crow listed at 6'2. Right by her, though, but the miss underneath by Casey Moody. Lady Bears want to run in transition the other way. They run into a little bit of trouble underneath. A pretty move and a rebound by Norfolk. Got to use the window. That's why they put it there. <laughs> this is Shaddy. Pull up jumper. The mid range not there. Mammoth Spring says they want to move quick. They want to push the ball. They want to play in transition. They want to play fast. And yet both these teams say when they look at each other, kind of like looking in the mirror, they both yeah. sort of want to do the same thing. Yeah, they, they want to push it at times. They don't want to run, get in the track meet. They want to take advantage of numbers. And neither team's really been able to get out in the fast break up to this point. Blanchard gives it off. On the drive, Shaddy, baseline move. Tried to go for the reverse. Fights for the rebound. Can't get it. And Tay Davis has it for the Lady Bears. Washam's going to try a three. That is blocked. Blanchard got her hand on it. So our first time out here, what's been a good start, a 7-4 North Fork lead. You are watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and 
all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Hey, at Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, square's the beef. Good crowd for a Friday night here in Hot Springs. A couple of North Arkansas schools making their way down about three and a half hours or so for each of these schools to come down to Hot Springs. Maybe make a weekend of it as well. A quick inbound. Crow underneath, and Corbett lays it in. Nice job by... Mammoth Springs to set up the inbound play and great ball movement inside. We've seen them. They've got a few open looks now in the lane. Now shooting just over 20% in the contest, though. So it feels like they've missed some easy shots. Blanchard somehow saves it there for Norfolk. The kick out, a three-point attempt off the front of the iron. Rebound again for Norfolk. Blanchard, the putback, not there either. Both these teams really struggling to get the offense going up to this point. Both well below 40%. Row bounce pass inside, taken away. Shaddy has it for Norfolk. Gives it off Allman. Pretty move, trying to find a lane. Euro step to the basket and draws the foul on her way up. That's the first time we've really seen one of these teams try to get out and transition. And a nice job by Norfolk to take advantage of the numbers. Reisner going to the line. Good job drawing contact there. That's on Tate Davis. Allman, we mentioned the MVP in this game a year ago. Coming off a 21-point game in the semifinals, a win over Rural Special. And Coach Luke Cornett called her the most clutch player I've seen. That's saying something considering their track record the last few years. No, no kidding. Cornett in his first season with Norfolk. Davis picks up her dribble. On the left side, Young's going to try a three. That's good. Norfolk was content with letting her shoot it. And she just buries it, averaging just six points a game. You leave her open, she's going to make you pay. Smallest kid out there. 5'6". Might be a generous 5'6". For Laney Young. Boy, she gets her hands in there. and She's got the turnover. Throw. That's batted away. Underneath the turnover at the other end. Yeah, trying to force it inside. Had position. He's got to lob that one. Said the bullet pass is picked off. And so Blanchard will bring this up for Norfolk. 9 8. Mammoth spring lead here. Early in the first quarter. On the drive, Allman. Floater's not there. Tipped around. Nice job by Shaddy to track it down in the corner. Second chance opportunity. Have to find a way to get those points. Both these teams, Kyle, shooting less than 33% though from the floor. And they'll take a chance to go to the line if they get one. Can't decide if to struggle offensively or the defense has been that good to start. Maybe a combination of the two. Inbound underneath and that's good. Nice job by Shaddy. Just found a little hole in the defense. Mammoth didn't recognize her. I just have a feeling these two teams are going to go back and forth, neck and neck the whole way. If you're following along with the live stats at home, maybe keep an eye on the lead changes column. There could be plenty of them as Norfolk looks like they're going to hold for the final shot of the quarter. Ten seconds here. Ball in the hand of Keeley Blanchard. The junior looking for some room, gets a screen, pulls up for three. She knocks it down. That'll big, do it for the first. Big, big shot to close out the first, pushes their advantage to four. 13-9, Norfolk after one. You're watching the Centennial Bay State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. 
Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. Is now a session. Great crowd on here at Bank OZK Arena. A Town Place Suites located at 120 Josiah Patel Court in Hot Springs. A proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. Big three to end the first quarter for Norfolk. Take a four point lead. Norfolk five of 13 from the field. Mammoth four of 12. Davis looking for Crow. Trying to use her size down low. That's not there. Fight for the rebound out of bounds. It'll stay this way. It's a great hustle to stick with it. Really nice defense by Norfolk to, to double team her, force her into a bad shot, but she sticks with the loose ball and gets themselves an extra possession. And in that first meeting a few weeks ago, and that's going to go Norfolk's way. Norfolk coach Luke Cornett said, man, the spring was just more physical in that game. And you can see what they're trying to do so far in this game. And Mammoth really going to try to work their inside out, and Norfolk's really more an outside in. They, they try to get around the perimeter, use the ball fake, and get to the mid-range. Blanchard gives it off to Allman. Back to Blanchard. On the drive, the kick out, Allman for three. And that one's not there. Tracked down by the Lady Bears. Davis already with three of her own in this game. Gives it off inside, Corbett, and a fight underneath. And it's going to be a jump ball that is headed the other way. Just nothing easy in the lane for Mammoth. Even though they might have the overall size advantage, really nice job of collapsing de defensively. That help side defense has been there for this first quarter in a minute of this 1A title game. That's a great point. No easy shots for Mammoth so far. Shaddy loses it, taken away by the Lady Bears in transition. Here they go, Lady Young, the lay-in. Never heard of speaking something into existence. Say no easy shots in the first run out for the Lady Bears, and maybe that's what they need to get themselves going. It won't be the first time that happens. It's the opposite of the announcer's curse. Exactly. Shaddy picks up her dribble and gives it back to Allman around to Blanchard. On the drive, pull-up jumper, no good. Norfolk shooting 35%, Mammoth 33%, 5 of 15 in this game. Two teams that combined 3 for 9 from beyond the arc. Three-point attempt here by Young around the rim and out. Rebound underneath. The putback is not there from Sarah Crow. Well, when you mentioned the score of their first meeting, 44-40 to 40 back in the regional, we knew that these two teams were going to have to grind out each possession and find a way to get buckets because their defenses have the tendency to clamp down and make nothing easy on you. Blanchard kicks it out. A three-point attempt this time is good. Kylie Allman, the senior. Starting to warm 40% from beyond the arc so far is Norfolk. Young gives it off to Crow in the corner. Shot fake. On the drive, Davis, pull up jumper, not there. Tell Norfolk's really daring Mammoth to shoot the ball from the perimeter and not going for that shot fake and just maintaining their position inside and making sure that's a one and done type possession. What a difference. Oh, nice drive there. Couldn't finish, though. Blanchard, when you played just a few weeks ago, it's not like they played back in December. It's such a vivid memory of right. playing kind of your rival a few weeks ago. Underneath, that one's not there from Corbett. 
You know all season they've been waiting to play. Didn't play in the regular season, but match up in regionals. Norfolk out here trying to prove that they are the number one team. Underneath Shaddy, I think that was partially tipped. You know, got a timeout by Mammoth. And you know, one thing that's really difficult for, for teams, and we're going to see it in this 1A boys game right after this, is the team that's the favorite, the heavy favorite. Mammoth comes in at 37-4. There's pressure on them. Even though they're not the defending champion, they lost in the championship game to this Norfolk team, there's extra pressure to come out and play well because in their mind they're expected to win. And it's always the, the more pressure you put on yourself, maybe you're a little tense, you, you grind it out a little more, nothing comes easy to you, got to learn to settle in, and maybe just watch one go through, get to the foul line, get to eat those easy shots, you know, create something with your defense like we saw just a few moments ago. Those are the little things that are going to help Mammoth settle in and get back into this as they're shooting 20%, 26% and haven't scored in almost two and a half minutes. Yeah, and Mammoth coach Scott Small told us, you know, they, they led until the final three minutes a year ago. Then he thought their age kind of showed they were pretty young. And he said, I don't want to just get back to this game. I want to get back to those last three minutes. I want to replay those and yeah. get some revenge for that. Not a single senior on this Norfolk roster. Isn't that amazing? A good thought there, and tracked down by Young. Skaggs has checked into the game. Davis kicks it out. This is Skaggs, picks up her dribble, sends it all the way across to Young. And a shot clock violation. Really, really impressive defensive possession there for Norfolk. We're starting to see that they can control the game on that end of the floor. A timeout on the floor here, 16-11. These two teams grinding it out as we come down the home stretch before halftime. We'll be back, but first let's check in back at Arkansas PBS Studios to see what they have on tap for us at the half. Hi, I'm Steve Sullivan. And I'm Ed Leon. Coming up at halftime. The better half of Razorback coach Eric Musselman, his wife Danielle, and the inspiring work she's doing. Plus how we keep Arkansas informed and engaged in public affairs. And we'll see you at halftime. Hey, I'm Rick Steves. You know, I don't go anywhere without my passport. And now, thanks to PBS Passport, you can travel with me and watch all 10 seasons of Rick Steves Europe and all my travel specials. This exclusive streaming service is just for our members. Not only can you see all my shows, but you can see thousands of hours of your favorite public television shows. Become a member today and get your passport. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. We on that next level. We on that next level. Back in Hot Springs, experience the action all over again next week. Watch all the championship games and Arkansas PBS sports features at youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS. Some tremendous features at halftime. A five-point game here down the home stretch of the second quarter in this one, the 1A Girls Championship. Kick out three-point attempt here, and that is good. They're starting to heat up, Kyle, and we've talked about how good Norfolk's defense is. Mammoth's defense needs to be just as good in these final three and a half minutes to get into halftime until their offense kind of wakes up because this one's starting to seem like it's getting away from them. Four threes already in this game for Norfolk. And Allman has three of them. Ten seconds again on the shot clock. And it's coming off a shot clock violation on their last possession. On the drive, four seconds. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line is good. 
Much-needed bucket there for Tay Davis. Yeah, that was a must-need there for Mammoth. Got to find a way to chip away, chip away. You know, keep it four, six points going into the half and kind of reset. Foul's going to be called there as Casey Moody was spinning away from contact. They're going to get Laney Young for that. Young coming off a 17-point game in the semifinals. And again, who didn't score, considering how lopsided some of those games were right. in favor of these two teams. Yeah, you look at the scores again for that top half of the bracket. We know the offense is there. They just got to find it tonight. And a turnover by Norfolk. get Crow back in, try to use her size. Crow and Davis both, by the way, committed to Williams Baptist in Walnut Ridge, NAIA. They need to kind of play together. They'll continue their careers together as Crow will go to the line. Crow had some offers from GAC schools in the state. That's what Mammoth really needs to do, Kyle. It's get to the foul line, work it into Crow, use her size to your advantage. Looks like she's got good footwork from what we've seen up to this point. Take advantage and make that defense collapse even more, and that's going to free up your shooters on the outside. I miss in the second, so five point game here. Allman bounce pass inside Blanchard on the baseline. Across, tried to get it across to Shad. He goes off the side of the backboard. She didn't know where she was on the floor, so that pass hits the side of the backboard, as you mentioned, goes out of bounds. Got to understand where you are positionally. Jay Davis will bring it up here for the Lady Bears. Heard in that last break, the crowd really getting into it. Impressed with the crowd for these two teams. Into the corner, Young inside pro. Gives it off. Good idea. Trying to get it to Corbett. Forces it up off the back of the iron. Corbett seems to be their go-to player in the lane. Averages 11 points, 5 rebounds. She just hasn't found the touch yet. Rancher working around contact. Trying to dump it down low. Shaddy along the baseline. The reverse is swatted away by Crow. Another look here, nice job. All ball there from Crow. Allman inbounds to Blanchard. They swing it around to Moody. In the corner, Shaddy on the drive. Kicks it out, Allman back to Shaddy for three. Norfolk staying hot from beyond the arc. And you think when Mammoth Springs gonna start to inch back into this contest, Norfolk knocks down another three, five of eight from distance. Suddenly an eight-point Norfolk lead on the other end. Laney Young with the answer. That's a big response there. She's already matched her season average with six points as she's knocked down a pair of three-pointers. We come down to the final 40 seconds of this first half. Blanchard working off the screen. Allman now trying to find a lane, loses the ball. A fight on the floor, and let's see what they call here. And joint possession, and this is headed Mammoth's way. They can hold for the final shot here, five-point contest. I feel like if you're Mammoth Spring, you like your chances. You're not, you're not playing well, you're not shooting it well, and you're still well within striking distance. Big possession, momentum opportunity here. Instead, they turn it over. Okay. Norfolk comes away with it. Try to force it inside. Not a good decision. Allman gives it off to Blanchard, who gets across. I think the crowd wanted an over and back there. Two seconds now. They got to hoist it up at the buzzer. The shot's no good. Rebound to Crow, and that'll do it for the first half. So Norfolk with a five-point lead. They've led for most of this half thanks to impressive shooting from three-point range. It's 22-17 at halftime in Hot Springs. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.
Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. Is now a session. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everybody, we're back for another halftime, but don't go anywhere because we have plenty on tap for you. Let's start with Danielle Musselman, a former sports anchor, family general manager, and wife of Razorback men's head basketball coach, Eric. She's bringing her passion for sports to a team that needs it now more than ever, raising funds for cancer research. I grew up moving all around. I was actually born in St. Louis, but I lived in, gosh, four or five states. I finally ended up going to high school outside of Atlanta, Georgia. So when people ask where I'm from, I say Atlanta, but really, I mean, I was living all over the United States before then. I always remember being a sports fan. My dad was a huge sports fan, and he took me to baseball games and basketball games from the time when I was little. I actually started out thinking that I wanted to go to film school. And I remember clearly freshman year, I took a film class and I hated it. <laughs> so immediately I knew that that's not what I wanted to do. And finally I settled in on sports casting. And the funny thing about that is looking back, I always was a broadcaster. You know, I used to do plays. I was always the kid that wanted to read the radio announcements. That is where my true like passion and talent always was, but it just took a little bit longer for me to kind of put it all together and realize, hey, you want to be a sports anchor. There were people that I looked up to, like Robin Roberts and Pam Oliver that were there, but it wasn't like I turned on the TV every day and, and saw people that looked like me. So whenever I met Coach Musselman, I just remember talking to him and thinking how funny and how nice he was. I didn't think he was interested in me at all. And then at the end of the conversation, he asked me for my phone number. So I was like, oh, okay, there's something here. He started talking about marriage like six months later. It was, it was awesome. A year later, we were married. Whenever we were at the University of Nevada, we kind of knew we were not gonna leave unless it was something that really felt right. And whenever Arkansas came along, that was something that really felt right. Let's go! Let's go! Come on, let's go! Sports broadcasting was absolutely my passion. I worked so hard on it for, gosh, I don't know, 15 years. But then whenever I stepped away, I was a little scared because I didn't know what my next passion was going to be. And it definitely took time. I didn't wake up the next morning and say, you know, now I'm going to fundraise. <laughs> it took time. As we prepare to come together to raise funds for pediatric cancer research and lodging, I just want to take a minute to thank a group of people that have made this evening possible and everything that it is. So thank you so much to our Suits and Sneakers 2022 committee. So now the philanthropy is something that I'm, I'm so proud of. I've lived in, I don't even know, 13 or 14 different states. We have had so many jobs between us, and so I, I just think who I am right now is, is a busy mom and wife. And, you know, 10 years from now, it's going to be something completely different, and, and that's okay. It's always great to see journeys like this. Danielle Musselman is truly an inspirational person. Now it's time to honor some of the students who made the grades to become an Arkansas PBS student all-star. Here's the girls, 1A, 3A, and 5A classifications. We're kicking it off with Emma Dold from the Sacred Heart Lady Knights. Emma plans to attend Arkansas State for political science and business economics. She enjoys playing sports and clogging. 
Next up is Sydney Knight with the Baptist Prep Eagles. Sydney has a 4.0 GPA and will attend Wachita Baptist University to study chemistry. Finally, we have Deanna Kamenga representing the Parkview Patriots. Deanna has a 4.2 GPA and plans to study physical therapy and exercise science in college. She enjoys spending time with her family. To see all the Arkansas PBS student all-stars, visit the Arkansas PBS YouTube channel or scan the QR code. Congratulations and keep up the good work. Now let's get over to Ed Leon. He's going to fill you in on how Arkansas PBS is working hard to keep you informed, Ed. Thanks, Sully. Arkansas PBS is educational television, and part of that is keeping you well informed with our current affairs programming that keeps the pulse of the issues affecting Arkansas. Let's take a look. For almost four decades, Arkansas Week's been keeping you informed of the news and issues that matter most. I'm Christina Munoz for Arkansas Week. How huge is agriculture slash farming here in the state of Arkansas? The drought, hay prices, cost of pasture. It's costing more for farmers to do business. Election day just around the corner and everyone agrees there's a lot at stake. It's analysis and insight on the races you care about. This will be a game changer. The rates of mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, burnout, and suicide have skyrocketed among American farmers. Hear me out, there is help and you can move past it and all it takes is you reaching out and we're here for you. Keeping you informed and engaged, that is public media. And that is what the dedicated people in this building work to do every day. You can become part of that team by donating to Arkansas PBS. Scan the QR code on your screen if you're enjoying these high school championship games, if you appreciate our commitment to public affairs, if you value high quality programming. That QR code will tell you how to do it and you'll see it pop up throughout these championship games. All right, Sully, that's it for the halftime show. Yes, Ed, but there's plenty of action coming up from Bank OZK Arena. Let's get you back for the second half here on your home of the high school basketball state finals, Arkansas PBS. Thanks for watching. All right, man. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Welcome back to Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs. Kyle Deckelbaum and Bobby Swafford with you here on Arkansas PBS Sports. 22-17 lead for Norfolk in this 1A girls championship game. A couple North Arkansas teams that have become very big rivals here in 1A. Take a look at some of our halftime stats and Bobby, once these teams kind of settled into a little bit of a rhythm, the difference is that three-point shooting for Norfolk. Yeah, it really is. I mean, they hit five of their first eight three-point shots, and their defense is clamping down on the other end. Those stats are not the right ones for this contest. Uh, holding Mammoth Springs at 29% in the first half. Really, really impressed with that, but you're exactly right. And that three-pointer right before the half, that kind of pushed that lead back to the – uh, multiple possessions, uh, really impressive. We got the stats there. Yeah, five three-pointers there for Norfolk. That's going to certainly be the difference. Take a look at some of our first half highlights, and those will stand out. And one thing you'll notice as well, we're in Wa uh, Washam not scoring yeah. for Mammoth yet so far in this game, the player that we spotlighted at the beginning. Yeah, 20 points, three rebounds. I mentioned she's shooting 40% from the three-point line, has yet to get into the scoring column. So you got to find a way to get your best player in it. Uh, Adriana Corbett's kind of kept them in, got a lot of close range attempts. She's got to find a way to finish at the rim. And then Norfolk, I think they just got to keep doing what they're doing. They're, they seem to be getting open looks. They're doing the right things on the other end of the floor. Now that they got to come back to this floor, you know, they actually play the third quarter as they finally make it back with about 30 seconds left before we start this third period. Norfolk just out of the locker room. So 
perhaps quite the speech there at halftime. Is that what we can assume? <laughs> yeah, we're just you soak it all in. You know, it's <laughs> the last game of the year. Might as well hang out in the locker room as long as you can. Go for it. Going for back-to-back -back state championships. They beat this same Mammoth Spring team a year ago, 48-43. We have seen three girls that can really score for Norfolk. Three thousand point scorers on this team. And for Mammoth, their leading scorer, Washam, who averages 20. Yet to score so far in this game, and yet down just five. And what's a rematch of a game played just a few weeks ago in regionals, which Mammoth won. And again, the Norfolk's trying to prove a point that last year's championship was no fluke and trying to Maintain their dominance here over Mammoth, who did beat them in that regional game a few weeks ago. Here we go in the second half, 22-17 to start this one out in Hot Springs. Blanchard gives it off to Shaddy from the free throw line. Down low, underneath to Rasmussen, the kick out. Up top, back to Blanchard. Blanchard driving. Shot's not there, fighting for her own rebound. She's got it. And a whistle's going to be called, joint possession, and this is headed Mammoth's way. Well, isolation play, try to get Blanchard into it. Just three points in that first half for their leading scorer. She gets to the rim, but it, like we've seen a lot in this contest, Kyle's not able to finish at the rim. Mammoth, just no easy shots in that first half. Let's see if they can create something here. Looking down low, a turnover. Rasmussen came away with it for Norfolk. And the Panthers push it the other way. Blanchard's going to pause. I think these two teams, Bobby, content to take their time as well in both offense uh, possessions. In transition there, as I say that, Laney Young lays it in. Nice job by Young to get behind the defense. Norfolk's done a really nice job getting back defensively in the first half. That time, a little lack of days ago, she gets behind them. She's got eight points. Makes it a three-point game. In the corner, baseline drive, trying to get it to Moody. Out of bounds. Block to see her go up with that shot. She's got the ball right on the block. You, you, of course, you love the unselfish play, but you're right there at the rim. Try to go ahead and go up with it. And so Allman will inbound here for Norfolk. On the drive, Blanchard meets contact and scores. I think that might have been the conversation at halftime for Norfolk has attacked the basket with Blanchard. We've now seen three possessions twice. She's gone to the basket. And she's up to five in this game. To the corner, Young to the baseline. Crow, spin around shot underneath. That is just what Mammoth needed. Really nice move by Sarah Crow, the senior. The spin moves twice. We've seen her use that. She's able to finish. Now the chance for the old school three-point play. Another look here at Crow. And converts the three-point play. Sarah Crow, whose size was a little bit of a difference maker at times in the first. But nice job with their feet there. Long pass underneath. And that's a turnover. Davis rushing the other way for the Lady Bears. Pull up jumper. Off the mark slightly. That was around the rim. And Rasmussen has the rebound. Mammoth certainly trying to push the tempo, trying to speed this game. Maybe get a little more flow for their offense. Rasmussen, by the way, also an all-state bowler. Love those multi-sport athletes. <laughs> Even in bowling, Blanchard on the drive. The game plan, yeah, it's going to be a foul call. This is headed Mammoth's way. They call that on Blanchard. Oh, pardon me, on Shaddy. Davis will bring it up for the Lady Bears. Two-point game coming up on the five-minute mark here in the third quarter of the championship game. Tipped away. Panthers running in transition to give off to Moody. She lays it in. Nice job. Just the, the handoff there and uses her own body to shield off the oncoming defender. Easy lay in. And 
These two teams so patient on offense, and they are so good in transition as well. That's a travel there. The balance for Norfolk's really starting to show up. All five starters have scored. Nobody with more than seven points. Look at ten turnovers for each team so far. Blanchard trying to find some space. She picks up her dribble, looks for some help, gives it off to Moody. Bounce pass back to Blanchard. Underneath, that one's tipped away by Davis. Allman lucky to have it, and a foul's going to be called on Laney Young. Blanchard again attacking the basket, but that time return to sender. So it's taken us about three and a half minutes, but we can figure out the halftime adjustments. Your Norfolk attack the rim, if your Mammoth speed up the pace. That's what they were hammering home in that long halftime meeting there. Blanchard, and she pushed off. I'll tell you one thing about Blanchard, she always has that smile on yeah. her face, doesn't she? Whether she scores or turns it over or pushes off. Really nice defense for Mammoth there from Tay Davis. That moves her feet, stays in front of the attacking offensive player, draws the charge. Davis to Young here, back to Davis. Now Young in the corner. Mammoth trying to find a way to get this ball in. They do to Corbett underneath. She's got it. Nice cut there. And a passive the defense block. there from Young. Nice post to post pass there for the block. And all of a sudden, we've got a two point contest as we get the media timeouts. 26 24 Norfolk. This is the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. Team sports in Arkansas really is the building of character. It's being able to get through trials and tribulations as a team. You take those lessons from team sports and use them in everyday life situations. I'm R.J. Hawk. Please consider giving to Arkansas PBS Sports. A great crowd on hand. And Hakes, for a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. Make sure they know about it. They were on TV tonight. 26-24, <laughs> Norfolk. Midway through the third quarter here, this championship game in Hot Springs. Allman bounce pass over to Blanchard. Everything's running through her so far in this half. A three-point attempt off the mark. Rasmussen fighting for the rebound underneath. Blanchard diving on the court. Out of bounds. Just going Mammoth's way. It's the one rare time where you have two offensive rebounders in the same area. It cost yourself at a second possession as they knocked it off each other's hands. Davis brings it up here for the Lady Bears. Young. To Crow, back to the basket, kick out. A wide open three point attempt from the corner off the mark. Offensive rebound for Washam. Lays it in, Washam's first two of the game. Yeah, finally get a chance to see the leading score from Mammoth Spring. She gets the offensive rebound and just goes right to the basket. And we are tied for the first time since the early minutes of this contest. Norfolk's been pretty much in command with a single digit lead for most of this game. Tied now at 26. Shaddy on the drive, loses it. And a quick whistle here, joint possession. That's going to stay here with Norfolk. Now, how does Norfolk handle this run from Mammoth? They haven't scored now two minutes and seven seconds. 
How do they stop the bleeding and prevent even more momentum going over to the team wearing the white jerseys? A run that you had to know was coming, the way these two teams have played. Allman for three, off the iron, out of bounds here. And certainly, you imagine Luke Cornett telling his team, uh, up five is nothing in this yeah, game. That's exactly right. There's a lot of time left. Five points is not going to get you much. Just keep chopping the wood, chip away at it, and Mammoth's got a chance to take the lead. This is Davis, closely guarded by Allman. Picks up her dribble, sends it across to Young. Inside Crow, looking for some help. No one there to cut. Kick out to Washam. Now Young in the corner. They'll try Crow again. Crow's trying to spin back to the basket. They kick it out. Five on the shot clock here for Mammoth. On the drive, Corbett, wild shot's not there. Blanchard comes away with it. Really good defensive possession there. Mammoth got no easy looks. And Norfolk now a chance to regain the lead. Here comes Blanchard. She sees an opening. Thought there might have been some contact. And Norfolk does hold possession here. Allman on the shot, around and in. Second chance opportunity there for Norfolk. They take advantage. They've now got nine second chance points in this contest. Corbett up top, Davis stops, sends it across. Corbett fighting through traffic, and she scores. Corbett's been really aggressive on the block. Now 4 of 11 from the field. Finally gets that one to go, and again, we're all knotted up. She is so good at getting to the rim. Blanchard up top. That is a deep, deep three. Off the mark. Norfolk, the offensive possession here again. Another three-point attempt. Blanchard missed everything that time. Not to rush that one. Plenty of time on the reset shot clock. Didn't need to force it. Blanchard way off the mark. She's not having her best game shooting-wise. Just two of eight from the floor. That was a deep shot. But when you've got a few thousand-point scorers, there have been more than a few green lights, I would imagine, over the years. Well, that's well within her repertoire. Just. Didn't seem to find the grooves yet tonight. Now you don't get to 1,000 by driving every time, That's right. right? Inside Crow. Forces it up. Not there. Gets the rebound, though, and the Lady Bears have it. Ten on the shot clock. It did not reset. Three-point attempt. No, the put back underneath the foul. And Washington's going to the line. That right there, Kyle, is a prime example of an air ball actually benefits the offense because everybody on the defensive side looking for a body to box out and doesn't come off the rim like you expected to. Now the chance for the three-point play for Washington. Bryn Washam, who averages 20, going to the line here. She's been quiet so far, but she's starting to heat up a bit. She's been in the leading scorer for this Mammoth program since seventh grade. Not the fastest player by any stretch, but she knows how to score for this program. Five points now for her. Feels like Mammoth's going to need her. Shaddy on the drive. Nice. And she's got that. And yeah, nice move. Mammoth getting away from the pressure. They send it to the corner. Pass is a little bit too high for Young. I like the pass there. Had a chance at the open three, but a little out of control. They throw it out of bounds. And Norfolk's going to have to heave one. Yeah, suddenly just five tenths of a second here in the third quarter. And that'll do it. So a one-point game as we head to the fourth quarter of this 1A championship. How about this? Should be fun down the stretch. This is the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Thanks, George, appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. 
At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. What a third quarter there for Mammoth Spring to take a one-point lead. Norfolk staying hot from beyond the arc. Blanchard a deep shot there. And they've developed a pretty good routine of getting it inside to Blanchard. But how about Mammoth finding their way, getting to the basket. And Bryn Washam starting to heat up for Mammoth. Deep three-point attempt there is good. And so here we are, Lady Bears with a one-point lead, looking for their first state championship. At the start of the fourth, 31-30, Mammoth. That's what good scorers do. They find ways to get into the action when maybe the jump shots aren't falling. They're not in the flow of the offense. Go to the offensive glass, get some easy buckets. These two teams that have been the top two definitively in 1A. Playing a one-point game here in the fourth with a championship on the line. Davis kicks it out. Good look over to Young. And a nice job by Allman to get in position to stop her from shooting there. They try to send it inside. It's a turnover. Rasmussen comes away with it for Norfolk. Or pardon me, that's Moody. Both these teams shooting 38% from the floor. It's about as even as it could possibly be. Blanchard picks up her dribble, gives it off to Moody. Passes up the shot, gives it off to Allman. Back to Moody. Takes it out to Blanchard. That was the key early. This is Rasmussen for three. No good. Rebound underneath. Allman, the putback is there. A nice dive by Allman. Creates a little separation with a, a slight shoulder to the sternum. And the easy putback off the window. I think the tempo that these two teams play with makes every possession so big. That's going to be a foul called there. Adriana Corbett's going to go to the line. Nice diagonal pass from the high post. Flashing Corbett. Draws the foul. Get to the strike. These teams are effective in transition, but on offense, they are very comfortable playing for the best shot. Both down. So back and forth they go. Mineral back in front by one. Mammoth back in front by one, I should say. Up top, Allman. Allman on the drive. Lays it up off the glass. Rebound, Mammoth. Corbett gets some help from Davis. Pro. Up top to Young. They swing it around to Davis. Underneath. Great Good pass. luck. Nice pass there. And it goes. Corbett with the lay in. The additional great diagonal pass. And then this one more for good measure. And Corbett's having a big time second half. She's up to 12 in this game. Allman. Bounce pass. Pull up. Jumper from the free throw line is good. Moody knocking that down. You rarely see it in today's basketball, Kyle. Teams that like the mid-range jumper, Norfolk is deadly, 15 feet. Tipped inside, a turnover. Allman holding on to it. A nice job there by Young to get her hands in and force that jump ball. It looked like Kylie Allman was trying to get a timeout, but the whistle blew before she could get it. Possession error going to keep it with the Lady Panthers. The all-important arrow swings the other direction now. Here's Norfolk. Down one, knocked away, and they did touch that, so out of bounds here. And this will stay with Norfolk. Mammoth crowd, not a huge fan of that, but we don't really expect them to be, to be quite honest. A quick look here. I think she got her hand in there. Could have been a foul call either way. I really like how not just this game, but every game here in the state finals have been called. They've been letting them play. It is true. We've had to, a good rhythm to a lot of games. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to be. I mean, 
when you get to this level, the, you're the two best teams no matter what, and you're letting the outcome be determined on the floor, I don't recall seeing a player really get into foul trouble. Yeah, that's a great point. Allman spinning around in trouble. She turns it over. Davis comes away with it for the Lady Bears. She'll let the traffic go by her and now bring it up. Corbett back to Davis here. Under five to go in a one-point game. A three-point attempt is good. How good has she been, Lady Young? Averaging just six points a game on the season, and she's got 13 in the biggest game of her career. A 5'6 junior coming off a 17-point game in the semifinal. She's been fantastic here, 13. And a four-point mammoth lead. On the drive, Blanchard not there. Fighting for the rebound. Gotta Corbett comes away with it. Got to finish that at the rim. Had a wide open look at it. She might have been surprised she was that open, to be yeah. quite honest. Yeah, the seas parted there. I think so is Corbett here. She drives to get a closer shot. Throw the put back. No, Corbett can't get it. And Rasmussen has it, gives it off, and now it's Norfolk ball. Blanchard rushing the other way. She'll stop. They set up an offense. Shaddy swings it around to the corner. Moody for three. Off the mark. Rebound Shaddy underneath. Puts it back up and scores. Another big time second chance opportunity there for Norfolk. They needed it. They've got to stay within striking distance. 13 second chance points now for the Lady Panthers. Back within two. 3.20 to go. Corbett gives it back to Davis. These teams look winded. The next dead ball is going to be the media timeout. Oh, they sure do. Three-point attempt. Corbett not there. Crow fights for it. Out of bounds. No fourth ball. And it's our last break before this championship's decided. A 38-36 Bears lead. This is the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. We on that next level. We on that next level. 38-36 Mammoth and Bobby, how good has Laney Young been for the Bears? You always know that there's going to be that one unsung hero who comes through in a huge game. And today it's been Laney Young, just six points on the season, 13 on five of eight shooting, three of six from three-point range. She's the unsung hero. Maybe she leads the Lady Bears to a title. Yeah, smallest player out there, perhaps. Five for eight from the field, three threes in this game. And a big part of the reason why Mammoth has taken a two-point lead with three minutes to go. Coaches all the time talk about how do you close, how can you finish off a game. The final three minutes going to decide this 1A title game. That's exactly what Mammoth coach Scott Small said. He said this is where our age showed at this time a year ago. We were leading late as Almond's no good and Crow the rebound. And our age showed in those final three minutes. He said, I want to get back to those final three minutes. And here they are, up two. Off ball contact, nothing called there. Slow it down a little bit. Make sure you get a nice clean look at it. 
See if Mammoth's veteran presence and experience shows up here. Crow, and they're gonna wave that off, a travel call. Yeah, the jump step, or the jump stop, excuse me, landed on two different feet, and so what she went up for, that's the turnover. Well, Blanchard will take her time bringing this up. They've run the offense through her here in the second half. Inside, Shaddy meets contact, no good. Crow gives it off the rebound to Corbett. Two minute mark. Feels like these two teams gotta make the most of every possession here. Davis. Fighting off the defense from Blanchard, a three-point attempt is good! Oh, Brynn Washington coming up big. She's been quiet for most of the contest, but that three is huge. Not only does it give him a five-point lead, gives her confidence, and the Lady Bear faithful are on their feet. With 90 seconds to play. Blanchard to Shaddy. Shaddy's gonna pull up from the free throw line, off the front of the rim. This is where the shot clock's so important now. First year, the. Shot clock's been at all classifications. You don't have to go ahead and foul now. You're guaranteed to get the basketball back. Down five, a turnover. Running the other way. Allman misses the easy lay-in. A fight for the rebound. They're going to call a jump ball. This is headed Mammoth's way. Sometimes when you're that wide open, they're the toughest shots and had too much momentum. Misses the lay-in, and Mammoth's going to take a timeout. Oh, boy. Well, you can see it on their face there. Still plenty of time, 106, down five, though. How big would that have been? And make it a one-possession game with just more than a minute left. With the shot clock, you're getting, you don't have to give up a foul. They haven't scored in the last two and a half minutes. Talking about Norfolk, that bucket would have been huge. Really would have changed your entire outlook for these final 66 seconds. Yeah, they're one for their last seven, a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought. Oh, for their last four. Five team fouls on the Lady Panthers, so they still have one to, gain, one to give before Mammoth is in the bonus. And one thing to pay attention to, Mammoth's only been called for one foul in this second half, so they can start making Norfolk waste some clock foul and, and start it all over. And so you just brought it up at our last uh, jump ball there, how important that possession yeah. arrow is to go Mammoth's way, and Norfolk doesn't get another crack at it. Yeah, I mean, you, so you see it more so in, in high school than any other level. I mean, that possession arrow, especially in the fourth quarter, is so big. So we'll see if Mammoth can close this out here. They are seeking their first state championship of 37-4 and four season, 8-0 in the 3-1A. They've won four tournaments this year, conference, district, regional. A lot to show, but this is the ultimate prize here. See if they can beat their rivals, Norfolk, twice. One minute left here in this championship game. Knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Norfolk. If you're Norfolk here, you, you really got to get a defensive stop and see if you can maybe trap in the corner and force a turnover. Well, they're trying. Really what you can't afford to do if you're going to play it out is you can't foul late in the shot clock. Seems they're intent on doing that. Going for the steal, and a foul is going to be called. What were we talking about speaking things into existence earlier? <laughs> Uh, that's one thing you couldn't afford to do because, of course, a foul resets the shot clock now, just an 11-second differential. If you're Norfolk, you might have to go ahead and give one up. Davis inbounds. Off to Young, all the way across to Washam. Crow, and they play keep away. Crow on the break. Washam out of bounds, a turnover, and this will be Norfolk basketball here. Big that break. timeout's going to be called. Big break there for Norfolk. If the foul that late, they could have bled that all the way down to 10 seconds with defense forces the turnover and kind of bails themselves out of that tough situation. Yeah, you wonder if Mammoth there sort of being a little aggressive to yeah. try to get an offensive playoff. Yeah. 
Yeah, you almost like you, you never want to stall, especially as a, a spectator or announcer calling a game. You don't want to see somebody stall, but if you're going to do it, maybe that's the time. Right. As you've got a two possession lead, and he could have bled that all the way down to about 10 or 11 seconds. So now Norfolk, who, you know, I won't say dominated, but they had a pretty comfortable lead yeah. in that first half thanks to their three point shooting. Although it's sort of disappeared a little bit here in the second half, and you wonder if they can find that stroke again. Not that you need a three right away, yeah. but. Uh, you know, they showed in that first half how capable they are. Yeah, they haven't scored in the last three minutes. You mentioned how, how well they played. They were in control for most of the first half, and just that one run, that third quarter, swung the momentum the other direction. 24 to 14 is the advantage for Mammoth here in this second half. But 5 of 14 from deep as Norfolk have not made a three in the second half. Uh, you mentioned they don't have to have one, but it would be certainly a big time to get one. Our excellent crowd on here, a good finish, and one a boys game coming up after this. County line and Mark Tree on a Friday night here in Hot Springs. A big moment here for Norfolk, the defending state champions. Got to get a good shot here. Not, three is not necessary, but if you got an open look, you take it. Blanchard gives it off. That's a deep three-point attempt off the iron. Rebound by the Lady Bears, and a foul's called. Be careful there. Make sure that's not an intentional foul. Blanchard, of course, knew she had to give up one up. But we'll see what they call here. Looks like it is just going to be a common foul. Nope, nope. They're going to change it to an intentional. Are you surprised by that? A little bit, ma mainly because they didn't call it right away. You know, normally if they get together, uh, you go ahead and say that's a common foul. If, I don't, I don't disagree with the call, but just because they didn't call it right away. A big <laughs> free throw there. Yeah, and the reason I say I'm not surprised by it is because there was no clear intent at the ball. She clearly grabbed the offensive player, and the definition of an intentional foul. Those are two huge free throws for Mammoth. They gave us knocking both of them down. And they'll get the ball here. Suddenly, seven-point game, 22.8 to go. Corbett gets it into Davis. Back to Corbett and the foul. So a big deficit that's seven and could be nine. And these Lady Bears fans are starting to jump around and feel it. It's been a long year waiting for this moment for Mammoth Spring. And they know how painful it was to walk off this floor at Bank OZK Arena losing a championship game a year ago. And now they're less than 20 seconds away from avenging that loss. Corbett, 13 points, 5 for 14 from the field. Corbett and Young, the two big scorers for Mammoth. Knocks them both down. 45-36, 19.8. Norfolk's got to move quickly here. Moody brings it up. Deep three-point attempt, no good. And it's headed Mammoth's way. And they've had some chances late. They've had some good looks. Inbounded. And they will not foul. And that's going to do it. It's a state championship for the Lady Bears. They get back here, and they win it all. A big time second half as the top ranked team in Class 1A proved who they were. Outscored Norfolk 28 to 14 in the final 16 minutes of play in Mammoth Spring. They earned that trophy. Huge second half, 45, 36 win. Mammoth's first state title. We'll be back to wrap it all up here from the winning coach and the MVP when we come back on the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. 
We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS Video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Back in Hot Spring to look at the trophy presentation. Congratulations to the Mammoth Spring Lady Bears. 1A state champions at last. Head coach Scott Smalls with us now. It's been a long time coming for your group. What Man, was that like? It has. It was a great feeling. You know, that was what we, uh, you know, obviously that was our goal all year long and, and maybe even, you know, 365, not a you know school year, but a calendar year since we were back here last year and, and lost that to, to Norfolk. And so, um, you know, just really proud of our kids and uh, the time and the effort that they put in and really just the maturity and the growth that had to come with that, uh, you know, to get back to this game and that moment and being down six at one point and, uh, you know, battling back and, and knowing they got to play a full game. So you go into the half trailing to the team that you lost in this championship game last year. It looked like a completely different team after halftime. Come out, you outscore them 28 to 14. The defense was there. You turned up the, the tempo, if you would, offensively. And it seemed like a couple of runouts led to get your offense rolling. It did. Uh, you know, at, and that was one thing that we and, – and kudos to them. They're very well coached and good athletes and everything. And we had kind of prepped for what we thought they were going to do. And they came out something different. And we had to call an audible and adjust a little bit. But, uh, again, that's that's a shout-out to our kids and being able to do those things and, and make plays when they needed to make plays. And just how happy are you when you've had a target on Norfolk all season going back to last year? <laughs> To actually accomplish that goal. Oh man, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to get the best sleep of my life. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and and now, um, you know, we get to celebrate it and and uh, you know, let those kids know that basketball, life, whatever. If you get knocked down, you can get back up and, and you know, get back to where you want to be. Well so. said, coach. Congratulations. We appreciate it. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. As you would trade spots right with a radio over there. Thank you, coach. Uh, that's a Right, we'll send you this way. Hey, yep. how about the MVP, Bryn Washam? Uh, remember, it's a, it's a tournament MVP. It's not just about this game and 45-36 uh, win here. Washam's going to come step in. Let's have you right in between us with that MVP trophy. 
We'll put this on you. All right. And you can even hold that trophy because that's sort of the fun part about winning it. <laughs> yeah. What is what is that like to have that handed to you and the even bigger trophy that's been your goal for so long? It's been, you know, my group's goal since third grade. So it was definitely something we've all been dreaming about, and it was just unreal. That second half, uh, that was impressive. <laughs> How do you sort of describe what your team was able to do? We were able to really just, you know, like Coach tells us, lock in and – get focused on what we had a goal and that's what we were coming out here to do and I think that we really just focused up and played our game and that's what led to our win. You didn't see it on the highlight right there that three at the top of the key your offense the game wasn't there this sort of there all night how big was that three and what was going through your mind when you saw it go through the net? You know when I saw it go through the net I was like yeah this is it this is ours we've got this from here on out it was just a key moment in the game. What's that uh, championship celebration going to be like? It's going to be crazy. <laughs> We're a crazy bunch, a very competitive bunch, so it's going to be crazy. Enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you. We're in Washington. The tournament MVP will take that back from you here. Congratulations to you. Took a little bit for these two teams to kind of get into a rhythm, it but did. once they did, you can tell these are the two best in 1A, and uh, that was a lot of fun to watch. It was. I mean, it, it almost felt like it took two and a half quarters Yeah, for, yeah. for, for both these teams to re really settle down. We saw Norfolk stay in the locker room almost the entire length of halftime, and Mammoth just came out and looked like a completely different team. It's amazing what one easy shot will do for confidence, not only for you, but your team, your fan base. And once they got it back to tied, you really felt the momentum really shift from the left side that we're looking at it to the right side of this arena, and it never stopped once Mammoth got it rolling. Well, revenge for Mammoth for sure. They're able to get that championship over the team that they lost to last year. I wonder if we'll see number three at this time a year from now. Hey, we got a great game coming up next. It's County Line and Mark Tree. County Line with that gaudy 44-0 record. That is coming up next here on Arkansas PBS Sports. For our hardworking crew at Bobby Swafford, I'm Kyle Deckelbaum saying so long for now. Join us in just a few minutes for the 1A Boys Championship. Thanks for watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.